So the baddies are on their way to Cleveland, which is the second stop on this baddies Midwest tour. And I have so many questions. We just gonna have to get into it. Is y'all ready to talk about it? Let's juice. Come on, Blazer. It's a beat for me. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Voodoo Doll TV, Bank with a quick little juice or whatever the case may be. And girl, this is Betty's Midwest on our way to Cleveland. I don't know what episode, like four or five or something. But look. There was so much happening on this episode. And was it me? Did most of the episode consist of being on that broke down bus with aluminum fur wrapped around it? Girl, I couldn't even really get comfortable watching it because I felt like there was cramped in like sardines on the bus. Oh, my Lord. Then I have a few questions. How did Ivory get her chain before a whole host of people? Like Summer, like Big Lex. Like, how did Ivory get her chain first? It's giving real, you know, favorites around here. It really is. Also, how does doggone Stewie get her chain? And also, Stewie, how you get beat up on your birthday? Oh, my God. Stewie, you looked it so bad. Oh, yeah, girl. You looked it so bad. You let Biggie roll you down the hill on your birthday, girl. You weren't supposed to go out like that. And speaking of Biggie... Biggie picks and chooses when she want to have a half a heart and when she want to have some heart because Biggie refused to fight Akbar or anybody else. But as soon as um Stewie, even though it was warranted, but as soon as Stewie steps up and was like, Biggie, no, Biggie, no, it's my birthday. She don't mind squabbling up, even though it was warranted because Stewie threw the flowers at her, the birthday flowers, girl. Poor flowers ain't had a chance. Do you understand me? So I'm just trying to figure out if Biggie was fighting to save her spot. And if so, why she ain't just running up with Akbar? Because that would have been a better fight. But we'll get into it. Also, Summer is dragging Pretty P, or I call her past the P, because I don't think she's pretty. I'm sorry. She's a cute girl. Like, you know, little sneakily, giggly, giggly, but pretty. Mm -hmm. But Summer is dragging Pretty P and Jazz up and down the river. Do you understand me? Summer got these girls super duper mad. Like she called them Maddie Maddie Shot O'Clock because they feeling like in their minds, how dare someone as the likes of Summer be rubbing shoulders with me on baddies. That's what this is all about. And Jazz, you supposed to be from her hood, so it looks even worse on you. But we'll get into it. It's a whole slew of things that's going on in this episode. And I want to get into them all. So, y'all, I may miss some things if I do charge it to the game and put it down in the comments. But listen, do me a favor. Like the video if you're coming in. Welcome to the dollhouse. Subscribe to the channel. And we about to get into this episode, girl. Because it was too much happening on the bus. Not enough on land. Everything was on the bus. Okay? Let's get into it. So now the episode picks up where we left back off. Pretty P is over there about to fight or is fighting Summer and Bad Dolly. They done came back in from the uh, the wine cellar, not the wine cellar, the apple cellar, whatever it was. And they on 10. They ready to roll. Now, Bad Dolly and Pretty P ends up twisting up. Honestly, I don't remember who won. I really don't. I, it was a tie. Both of them lost. I don't know. But anyway, inside they start to fight. Wigs start to flying as they always do, but then something happens because Bad Dolly hurts her hand. Now, according to Bad Dolly, she came in with an injured hand because I guess she was fighting somebody at the reunion. No, not, not the reunion. What do they call it? The auditions. She said her nose and her hand was messed up. And I'm on here saying, well, girl, why is you here, Ike? Why is you here? So the paramedic came by to help her hand. She just said something was wrong with the bone, girl. I don't know. But get well soon with your hand, I guess. Now, while this is happening, the other girls come in and they're like, what's going on, pretty P? What's going on? She was like, they in there wanting to fight me and I'm fighting both of them. I don't care. I don't care. Now, let me say this. I noticed that when they came in, Tessiki talking about why she fighting by herself. Where her friends at? Tessiki. No, baby. See, you starting to feel yourself because you went in and jumped in that fight for Anna Mac against Bad Dolly. No, that don't go like that. See, there are so many fights you didn't jump in, Mariah Lynn, or you didn't jump in, Krishan, that you don't get to say where's her friends at. Tessiki, please trade light, girl. I'm, you starting to make me not like you. Trade light. So now the fight ensues between Summer 
and Pretty P because Bad Dolly is over there in the emergency room in the corner getting her arm and hand and stuff all of that wrapped up. Now, I ain't going to lie. We all know Summer is my girl, but we all know Summer can't fight. It is what it is. But one thing Summer going to do is keep up with you and talk her big one as she should. So the fight ensues. Pretty P is trying to win milk for her life. We got my girl uh, Ivory over here looking confused. Like, what are y'all fighting for? What is going on? What is going on? And you know, Ivory, I'm glad you asked because I have a question for you, Fat, or more of an observation. Ever since Big Lex bopped you in your head, you've been real quiet, huh? It's almost like you a little humbled or something. Girl, I'm just saying, I know this thing, girl. I'm just saying what I see on TV. I'm just saying, anyways. So now the fight breaks up. Pretty P is calling Summer every dirty dog, stanky leg, this, that, and the third. You ain't nothing. I make $50,000 a month. Well, why is you on baddies, blockhead? Like, we got to start calling people out on certain things. If you make $50,000 a month, why would you be on baddies? It, it's, it's the craziness for me. I don't know for y'all, but I'm telling you what it is for me. Please send the block. Go lay down. So her and Summer getting the twist up again. And listen, Summer is a smart fighter. Summer said, girl, I can't swing like y'all. I can't get in the paint like y'all. But what I'm going to do is pull that wig. And that's what she's doing. She's pulling the wig and is actually giving her leverage in the fight against Pretty P. Now, Pretty P can't stand this because she feel like just fight head up. Girl, you do that with other fighters. Not with people who can't fight. They fight and windmill for their life, girl. So your hair getting pulled. And look at this big bag bison. Rolling big fat funky nasty cheesy greasy dirt I'm about. I don't know why they fighting, but I ain't gonna lie. I'm interested to see. So if they gonna keep fighting, I'ma keep fighting. And I'm over here saying, girl, can you even lift up your arms after surgery number 12? Roll it, please. I told you, take this dog on fur. This Rottweiler fur. Take that Rottweiler fur jacket off, girl. It's making you look big again. Get off of here. So anyway, another round, and I ain't gonna lie, a lot of y'all gonna say I'm biased, and maybe I am, but I feel like my girl Summer won at least one of them rounds, and I said it, and I said it. I don't care, because I feel like Pretty P doing all of this, Pretty P was supposed to be having Summer on the ground, girl, but it never happened. So in my opinion, Summer won at least one or two of them rounds. And I said it. Anyways, so now here come Jazz walking in and someone was like, yeah, come on. I want you. Come here. And look at Jazz. Why you want to fight me? I thought you said you was sorry. Why you want to fight me? And we over here saying, girl, Jazz, shut up and just get in the pain, girl. Shut up. Don't ask no why. You don't ask no girl why she want to fight you. Are you crazy? And look at Jazz in the doggone confessional. Summer is dirty. She just want to fight me for no reason. No, Summer want to fight you because you jumped in her business and you was over there jumping on the side with Ivory and them. And you supposed to be a girl from a hood. That's why she want to fight you, fat. So you can call her every dirty girl in the world. It won't matter. So into the fight, look at my girl, my, my poor friend, oh, Summer, fat. Oh, open your eyes, fat. Just open your eyes so you can see where the lick's coming from. But girl, they get the twisting up. And like I say, I might be biased, but I feel like Summer won these rounds too. I mean, I feel like if she didn't win, both of them lost. Because look at the way Jazz hold up her hands. Like, <laughs> girl, it's just like, <sighs> and you know, it's crazy because Jazz really believes she's better than Summer. But y'all on the same show. That's the gag. Girl, this is the time. And once again, my girl Summer using her survival skills to get her up out of this. And she pulled Jazz hair as she should. Now, listen, if this was two hitters, I'd be saying, oh, Summer, you lame for that pulling on that girl hair. But Summer can't fight. We can all agree on that. So Summer supposed to do that. She supposed to grab the hair. That's what it's for. Grab that hair, Summer. And look at Jazz after they break it up. That's all you do is grab hair. You jealous. You dirty. You ain't got nothing. Da, 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 da. Was it her or was it the other girl talking about they make 50 racks? It don't matter. It was just giving y'all really mad because y'all can't understand why somebody who you deem is less than you, which is Summer, could even be up here playing with you and talking to you and standing next to you. So here we go again. Another round. Again, Jazz look like, I don't know what this set is, girl. But anyway, Jazz is ready to fight Summer. Summer like it is what it is. What's up? 
And they got the twisting up again. Some will open your eyes, fat. You can't see nothing if they close. You don't know what she doing, where she coming from. But you know what? It don't matter. My girl couldn't see like Ray Charles, but she still was rolling as she should. When she got Jazz on the ground from pulling her hair, nevertheless, still got her on the ground. I say, Jazz, you don't get to say nothing else to Summer. Period. I don't care. When she slung you on the ground and got on top of you, I was saying, yeah, Summer, yeah, get her, get her, get her, eat, eat, eat. Yeah, I was. Because I felt like y'all was bullying that girl when she first got there. And I said it. Girl, this was the time, Jazz, you just leave it alone. But we know you're not, you know? So long story short, they pull the girls apart. Jazz is over there mad. Natalie's sitting there fighting, looking for her babe. Where's my vape? Has anyone seen my vape production? Get the film, get the footage, but get my vape as well. Oh, girl, this was a time. And like my girl Summer say, it's up every time I see Jazz. Jazz supposed to be from my city. I try to be cool with her and try to be cordial, but now it's up and it's stuck and I don't care. And I'm on her side because as she should. Jazz really was like, you know, picking the wrong side of things. And that's just that. Moving on. And look at Rolly. Girl, Rolly, when is your arm? Let me stop. I ain't gonna do that. Well, no, I am. When is your arm surgery? Girl, so look, Rolly is hyping up summer. The OGs like summer. They making uh summer twerk. Look at look at summer. Summer on the ground twerking because she don't care. She said these girls is mad and they press, and I agree. And this is the thing. The other two newbies, I'm talking about Jazz and Pretty P, do not think that Summer should have the favor of the OGs, nor should she be there. This is why they continue to fight. And speaking of continuing to fight, here come Pretty P back again for another round. Pretty P, please. And why you call yourself Pretty P? I mean, you cute at best, but Pretty... And your head shaped like a square, especially the forehead part when you be putting that little slick on it and when you be putting that black gel on it. I don't know, pretty P, past the P, I don't know. And look at um, Natalie. You guys, I got in a confessional because I have to get these girls together. I don't know why they're fighting. I don't know where my vape production where's my vape i don't know anything but i just know that these girls are booked and busy we gotta go and so natalie at the scene you guys you guys stop right now has any one of you seen my vape okay you have it fine move on production get me another vape but girls we have things to do. We have to roller skate. We have to fight. We have to go to clubs. We're booked and busy. What are you doing? So Natalie tells the girls that, girl, look, this is what it is. We about to go straight to the club. I know y'all funky and nasty. It don't matter. Just put your wigs back on. If you a real baddie, come on to the club like that. Girl, I'm not no real baddie. I got to take my I gotta take my bath. I'm sorry. I don't care. And so... Uh, Rolly decides that she's going to let Natalie Lee know that when they get to the next city, she wants to move in with the girls to see what's real tea. And she don't want to prejudge the girl. She really want to get to know him. And shout out to Rolly for that. And now you don't get many shout outs over here. But shout out to Rolly for actually wanting to get to know the girls instead of just looking at it from the outside looking in. So I thought that was dope. So off to the club they go. Big Lex is excited. She's actually from Cleveland. You know, every time I think of Cleveland, I think of, it's the thuggish, ruggish bone. Yeah, that's what I be thinking. But anyway, Big Lex says she's excited. Everybody's over in Cleveland by her people. She know everybody. And I'm over here saying, okay, Big Lex, I don't like the black hair on Big Lex. I don't know. I just, it's giving Wednesday Adams tea. But look at us, Summer, on the bus. I'm pretty on the bus. No panties. The girls are mad. Oh, well. Y'all really just hating on me. And she really talking about pretty P and Jazz. So, Summer is doing what she do best, trolling as she should. And look at Jazz. Yeah, it was Jazz the one who was around here saying she make 50 racks a month. She's so dirty. She's so trashy. She need to just let it go. She need to this, that, and the third. Jazz. Stop it. <laughs> like, you're never going to win this with Summer. You're, you're just not. And I think you should know that by now. You're never going to win. So on the bus, Summer and Jazz is going back and forth between her and Jazz and her and Pretty Pete. Everybody going back and forth. Um, Summer basically saying, y'all hoes just mad because I am that girl. And it is what it is. And the girls are really getting upset because they cannot get to Summer. Even when they beat Summer up, it does not affect Summer. Summer is a different breed of girl.
So now look a pretty pea looking like Pam from Total. <laughs> You're my pride and joy. You're my baby boy. Hey, this. But look a pretty pea. Oh, you apologized to me before, so I don't understand what's the big deal. I don't under I might have mixed her and uh, the other girl's storyline up, but just follow me, camera. But um, look, Ivory, tell the truth. Didn't she apologize? And look at Ivory, girl. I don't want nothing to do with that. Ivory, you sure been a little humble, huh? It's giving humble pie teas. And look at Emma, girl. I forgot you was there, brick face. Girl, look at all the girls we forgot was there. Now, my girl said, I never told you I was sorry. I never apologized. That's what Summer said. And um, Ivory was like, uh, yeah, Summer, you're lying. She said, girl, you did apologize to her, though. And I'm with Summer. If Summer says she ain't do it, she ain't do it. Nah, she might be lying through her teeth. But I'm going on, on the side of Summer. I like Summer, okay? And Ivory, shut up before we get Big Lex in her city. Shut it up, Ivory. Thick neck. And just like that, Pretty P is continuing to go back and forth with Summer. And I keep saying, y'all are not going to win in a war of words with Summer because Summer don't care. You're not even going to win in a fight. Even when you win in a fight, you still going to lose. Because Summer don't care. You can't beat somebody up who don't care because in their mind, they didn't get beat up. Like, it's ridiculous at this point. But this the part I had liked it. Big Lex, you know, she took a real good like in the summer. And she said, girl, come on over here, girl. And let's just do a toast and let these hoes be mad. And look at Summer. Yeah, they mad. Maddie, Maddie, shot a clock. Maddie, Maddie, shot a clock. And every time she said that, all I heard was Biggie's voice through Pretty Pete. It's always Maddie, Maddie, shot a clock, bro. It's always Maddie, Maddie, shot a clock. Girl, she had them girls through. Do you hear me? Shout out to Summer and Big Lex. I love this duo. So now they get to the roller skating rink. Uh, Roly said she can't skate because she don't want to fall and she's scared if she falls, she ain't going to be able to get up. Girl is giving life alert. Dub. And plus, it ain't really the fall that's stopping Roly from skating. It's them knees knocking like Jehovah Witness. You feel me? So anyway, the girls do a little skating. Uh, even Jayla fell, bald head Jayla fell on the ground. And I say, Lord, help her get her up, Lord. She old. You know what I'm saying? But bald head Jayla fell. The other girls were skating. And then they started performing. Now, when Diamond the Body got the mic, she took her wig off and had the whole doggone club turn. The whole skating rink. Diamond the Body, you know, one thing about Diamond is she's Diamond. She gon' Diamond. Diamond gon' Diamond. That's all I can say. Shout out to Diamond. She had all the girls crunking them. Natalie was so glad to have the young and the old hoes alike all together in one spot. And so that's what it was. So anyway, the girls end up leaving. And the next day, some of the girls are on the bus. And it's Jayla, bald head Jayla, taking control of this bus. And you, as you can see, they got, um, what's the girl? Rolling. Ball head Akbar, ball head Jayla, uh, 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 probably Tessiki in them back there. And also they got Jade and Alexis, AKA Stewie. So as they on the bus, here come Natalie calling, you guys, you guys, I need you guys back at the doggone house. I'm going to come and meet up with you guys so we can go over to the next spot. We're going to Cleveland. The only thing is one of the girls are not coming, okay? You guys, grab your things. Jayla, grab my vape from the house. I'm going to meet you guys there and we'll discuss further. So Jayla was like, bald head Jayla that is, was like, oh, okay, Natalie, we love you, Natalie. Thank you, Natalie. And then Jayla got in the confession and was like, well, I know it ain't me. So it don't matter who she sent home. All I know is I'm going to gather these girls so we can figure out who's going home. Now, Jade and Alexis say she knows she ain't going home. Obviously, Roland knows she ain't going home. And basically, the girls' concerns are... It better not be an OG. That's the girl's whole concern. Who is you sending home? Because it better not be an OG. And if you ask me, I think they were saying that because they knew Biggie ass need to go home and so does Anna Mac. And speaking of Anna Mac, this heifer won't stand up in the back of the bus and say, um, Natalie, you're sending people home and I know a few girls that need to go home. And I'm wondering, is you including yourself in your sidekick, Biggie? Because both of y'all need to go home. Matter of fact, they say two's company, but three's a crowd. Take Tessiki with y'all. Girl, you blow me when you stood up talking about you know who need to go home knowing you is the one who need to go home, Anna. Girl, uh, get off of here, stick figure. 
So now bald head Akbar get all the girls to come outside. All of them think they're heading to the next city when the gag is most of them are going, but one of them are not. And look at Natalie in the confessional. You guys, you know what time it is. We're going to Cleveland, but it's your favorite time. Like, is there anybody have anything they want to get off their chest? You know that means to fight. You guys have caught me. I can't lie anymore and act like it's all fake because it's real. Pass my vape. So back at the scene, here go Natalie. You guys, I think we had a great time here in the Midwest so far, but we're headed to Cleveland. And I just want to know, Biggie, I have an issue with you because number one, you were the last person to have my vape. And number two, you never stand up yourself against anybody. And look at Biggie. I don't know, bro. Why is it everybody want to come after me, bro? I told you I'm Dominican. I don't even fight, bro. I know I fought before, but I don't fight. I told you I only have half a lung, bro. Half a heart and half a lung. Why do we keep bringing it to me? I, I'm going to take care of myself, but you you guys are trying to make it seem like I'm just some scary person. And then here she go in the confessional with the headband by her eyebrows. I don't understand. I mean, if these people want to send me home, they can send me home. And I'm saying, please send her home. Immediately, expeditiously, send her home and that headband. Send her home because at this point, we're not kissing no behind. And so now Natalie brings up the fact that Akbar has something to say about Biggie not taking up for herself. And look at Akbar. At the end of the day, I'm the queen of Atlanta. I'm the queen of Atlanta. And I do feel like Biggie, you don't be standing on business. You don't be standing on no business. So I feel like. You just scary and you need to go home or something like that. And look at Biggie. Hey, yo, bro. I don't understand why you have anything to say to me, bro. Like, you're, like, old enough to be my mom, bro. Like, what is wrong? Like, why me? Like, of all the people to talk to, like, why are you talking to me, bro? Like, I don't even know you. Like, who are you? Like, you don't even go here. Like, leave me alone, bro. I told you I'm Dominican. We don't fight. So they trying to buck up a fight between Akbar and Biggie. And Akbar over there telling Biggie, you young enough to be my child. Talking about ain't nobody gonna put their hands on me. I don't wanna fight you, Biggie. You still, you young enough to be my child. Why is you on a show with people young enough to be your child, Akbar? What does that say about you? Please tell me, please. They get the going back and forth. Biggie threw her purse at Akbar and Akbar did nothing. Not only did Akbar do nothing, Biggie didn't do nothing either. As a matter of fact, even uh, Anna, Anna Mac was like, girl, you're going to throw the purse at the girl. You're supposed to follow it up with a mink, mink, mink. You ain't supposed to just stand there. But it's obvious none of these girls want to fight each other. And this is all performative at this point. But Biggie needs a fight. Because if Biggie don't fight somebody, Biggie knows she's probably either going home today or maybe somewhere near in the future. And I say they didn't need to bring her back. If she coming in with half a heart and a half a lung and a half a eye, I say send her home where she could go find the other half at this point. So her and Akbar arguing back and forth, both tongue wrestling. And my girl Summer said, y'all taking too long. So Summer ran up on who that was, Pretty P or Jazz? I can't see. But Summer ran up on one of them. It was Jazz. Some of them ran up, some of them ran up on Jazz and started bopping Jazz. She was like, girl, uh-uh. I already want to fight you anyway. Um, yeah, we might as well get it popping because these girls don't really want to fight. And look at Anna Mac after they done broke it up. Summer, why would you go and sneak her? You can't sneak. They said no sneaking. You got to fight head up. And Summer said, I already told her to square up. She knew what it was. Girl, it ain't no sneaking when you already know it's up. So it is what it is. And Anna Mac, you mind your business. Please mind your business. Please. And look at Summer, one of her tracks done fell out. Girl, I ain't know people still be wearing tracks. I love the color, but I ain't know people be wearing tracks. Girl, my girl got her Mary J. Blige not gonna cry uh, tracks going. Do you hear me? Y'all remember that slick that came from the other side of the forehead all the way to that side? It's giving not gonna cry tease. Go ahead on, girl. But she mad because some of them pulled her tracks out, and I kind of don't blame her. Natalie is still trying to egg this fight on between Akbar and Biggie and it's obvious none of these girls want to fight each other. Natalie is really, in my opinion, saying like, hey, if you don't fight, you going home without saying if you don't fight, you going home. And Biggie is kind of picking up what she putting down, but Biggie don't want to fight nobody who could possibly beat her ass. That's my, that's my opinion and that's what I think and neither does Akbar. So Akbar was like, you know what? I'm going home to the queen of Atlanta. I'm, I'm the queen of Atlanta. I'm going home to my pastor, bruh. I ain't about to deal with this. So she puts her shades on, acting like she ain't mind fighting, but she really did. She didn't want to fight that girl. So bald head Akbar put her shades on and said she going to meet her pastor or something. 
Now, Biggie is telling Natalie, basically, uh, you trying to get me to fight and I don't want to fight. This Biggie. Bro, I keep telling you guys, if you're going to send me home, just send me home, bro. I don't want to fight. I'm not a fighter, bro. I told you in the Dominican, we don't fight. We don't even do karate, bro. We don't even watch fighting. Y'all keep trying to make me fight. I'm not a fighter. I'm Dominican, bro. We eat Spanish food. We don't fight. And look up, Natalie. Oh, Biggie and the rest of you guys, you have to learn that this is a baddie show. So don't take it personally. And look at Jade and Alexis jumping in. Biggie, stop. You got to stop. Like, bro, it's my birthday. And I'm saying, Jaden, why? Who told you? Who piped you up, little vampire? Girl, Jalen, you look as pale as the snow. Do you hear me? Biggie, why are you doing this on my birthday? Don't do this on my birthday. And when I tell you Biggie ate you up, <laughs> Biggie said... Girl, it's your birthday and you don't even look like it. So I don't give a F. And I see, oh, <laughs> look, Biggie get on my nerves, but you can't say the helping on come and step and press when she got her little, her little stuff on, you know. So, girl, this makes Jade and Alexis extremely mad. I hate to see that Tessiki is always there looking like she ready to jump up for all the people that she don't need to jump up for. And it's really giving me, girl, please stop it. Every episode, Tasiki looks more and more like the bully the people are saying that she is. So after Jade and Alexis threw her flowers, now Biggie's reflexes kick in, and now she gets the twisting up with Jade and Alexis. Now let me say this. I feel two ways about this. Number one, Jaden, you threw the flowers on her, so it is what it is. You can't be mad. But number two, I do feel like Biggie picks and chooses her fights. Because, girl, you done beat up Jaden and Alexis, I mean, and that's cool. But when Anna Mac was hollering, I'm small every, and I'm little, everybody was cool with it. But my thing is with Jaden is, girl, you got beat up on your birthday. Like, why would you throw the flowers at a girl big like Biggie? Biggie is only Dominican and don't fight when she fighting people that could beat her up. Not people that she can beat up. Now, today is the day your mom shitted you out and look at you sitting on here, done got Molly Wop. So she tries to reason with Biggie and she was like, but Biggie, you fought me and I'm little. Why you didn't fight Akbar? Why you didn't fight Akbar? And Biggie was like, because I'm Dominican, bro. We don't really fight. I only fought you because you hit me first. Like, I'm not going to fight her, bro. I'm Dominican. I keep telling you guys that y'all keep asking me the same thing. I'm not going to fight her. I'm just going to fight you. And honestly, I feel like if you could throw a lick, then you could take one. So don't try to reason with her now. Now, this is the part that made me mad. Biggie got in her confession. was talking about, you did it to yourself, bro. <laughs> I mean, you did it to yourself on your birthday, bro. It's your birthday. Now you got beat up, bro. It doesn't make sense. See, now you have a whole lung and a whole heart. See, before Oh, you had a half a heart, but now you miraculously found the other half to fight Jaden and Alexis. Biggie, you 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 a punk. You 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 scary, bro. You scary, and that's why the girls be turning you every which way loose. Every opportunity they get, and as they should, and pull that goddamn headband off the front of your eyebrows, girl. Damn. Now, Summer is out there saying, I don't care. I still want my rounds. I still want my rounds. And Summer is calling out any and everybody, but in particular, Pretty P and Jazz. Summer says she want her rounds. So her and Jazz go up first. Natalie is over there trying to act like she don't want them to fight. You guys, you shouldn't fight. I got my vape, but I need my other vape. Where's my vape? You guys shouldn't fight. Production, directors. Get everything. Get all the angles. You shouldn't fight, you guys. Are we going to do this all the time, guys? You shouldn't fight. And just like that, every time Jazz twists up with Summer, she knows Summer going to grab her hair. Why she keep going in with her head down, I don't know. So Summer grabs her hair, as she always does, and it gives Summer the upper hand. Again, Summer knows she can't go head up with you hoes. She ain't trying to. What she is doing is using her strategies that work for her. And you're getting beat up every time, Jazz. Jazz is over there all she want to do is pull my hair and I don't have no problem with her and I thought she was this and I thought it was that and that and that girl Jazz please you know got beat up well you didn't really technically get beat up but in the sense of who won and who lost she got beat up just leave it alone and go sit down girl please and all she's doing over there is calling summer dirty and broke and it's really getting played out at this point now Natalie is on there telling them you guys Someone's going to get a baddie chain, you guys. And today, I'm going to present the baddie chain. Now, guess who takes up issue with this? 
Dime in the body. Dime in the body said she didn't have to get beat up, tooth knocked out, and come back and fight the big heavyweight champion of the world. Roly poly, big fat funk, and that is easy, greasy, dirty ass for order for her to get a doggone chain. She was like, none of the newbies deserve a chain. And I agree. If we're going to be technical about it. But, you know, Dime in the body started talking cash money. She's naive. Dime in the body said whoever get the chain, she going to take the chain. Now, she said that in the confessionals, not out there. And I'm over here saying, oh, girl, I wonder who going to get this chain. Because Dime in the body said she about to snatch it up off of somebody's neck. And speaking of neck, when, um, what's her name? Natalie presented the chain to Nick, a.k.a. Ivory. Ivory was like, oh my God, oh my God, I got a chain. I got a baddie chain. Anybody want to intercept? Does anybody want to intercept? And look a dime in the body. Hell no, girl. I was just playing. I would just be talking in the confessional, girl. Hell, come on. Let me help you put it on, fat. Dime in the body that was smart. You done already got beat up by one heavy hitter. Don't get beat up by two. Back to back, please. So Dime in the Body helps her put on her chain because she just was trying to mums the word of what she had said before because she know Ivory will turn every which way but loose. Shout out to Dime in the Body. That was smart of you, girl. Now, this is my humble opinion. Ivory did not deserve that chain first. I know Ivory fought, but I feel like Summer fought the most, number one. Number two, Big Lex beat up Summer. I mean, not Summer. Big Lex beat up Ivory. So in, by that measure, uh, Big Lex should have had the chain. I'm not mad that Ivory got the chain. I think she deserves one at some point because, like she said, she ain't never had nothing real in her life. Everything been fake. Everything. Draws and all. She said, but this is big for her. But I feel like she shouldn't have got the chain first. I do. But congratulations, Fat. That's all I can really say. You know what I'm saying? So Natalie tells the girls, Biggie, I'm going to let you stay for now. But I do want to send somebody home. Someone's going to have to go home and not go into Cleveland with us. Yoshi, I think you're so great. You're the person that I picked. I personally wanted you on the show. You always have my vape. But it turns out you were talking to me. You have a lot going on behind the scenes. And I don't think this place is a good fit for you. And girl, when the camera panned over to Yoshi, I said, now who is that? Oh, girl, that lightning, that makeup be doing wonders, ain't it? But anyway, Yoshi said she appreciated being that she was ready to go home anyway, Cap. And uh, she also said that she felt like her mental health wasn't up to par. So she just going to go ahead on to the house. She said she enjoyed going out to the clubs with the girls. And that's all because I really forgot Yoshi was there. Bye, Yoshi. Go home, girl. Just go go wrap yourself up in a blanket or something. Now, Natalie messy ass after telling the girl, I love you. I picked you because I wanted you. And I know we. I'm sending you home simply because you having personal issues. Natalie get up here and say, it was actually time for Yoshi to go. She's boring. She does nothing. She brings nothing. She's not even all that cute. I don't like her. And it's time for her to go. Girl, Natalie, you was fake for that girl. You was so fake for that. Why you didn't tell that to that girl in her face? Girl, Natalie is tired and through. Do you hear me? So now all the girls hop on the bus to head to Cleveland. Ain't nobody took no bath. So I'm pretty sure the bus is smelling like Chiwis, hot fries, and Summer's Eve or something like that. But on the bus, Ballhead Jayla took this time to address Biggie. Now, Ballhead Jayla feel like, Biggie, it was kind of fake of you because you never stand up for yourself like Akbar said, and then you didn't want to fight Akbar, but you turned around and fought Stewie, and that's fake to me because you threw the purse at Akbar and still didn't swing, and that's just giving fake like you not standing on business. And I, I completely agree with Ballhead Jayla, I do. But Biggie don't want to hear that. Biggie's over there saying, but I don't care, bro. I told you I don't like to fight. I'm from Dominican, bro. I don't fight. I don't know why you keep you keep wanting me to fight, bro. I stand on my business, bro. I told you I only have half a lung. Now you want me to fight again. Like, do you want me to run out of breath? Like, what do you want me to do? And it's not that, Biggie. It's just you talk too much to be so scary. And has anyone else noticed every time somebody confronting Biggie, Tessie is next to her looking like a damn lap dog or a guard dog? Oh, Tasiki, you are really putting a sour taste in my mouth, girl. You really are. 
So now on the bus, Jazz doesn't understand why Summer keep trying to fight her. She don't understand why this girl having all these issues. And Big Lex said, well, kind of because you jumped in some business that had nothing to do with you. And look at Anna Mac. Oh, kind of like you did as it pertains to Jayla. And she was like, yeah, just like that. And I'm over here saying, I wish Big Lex would have reached across that doggone crowd and grabbed you up so hard. Do you hear me? Ooh, Big Lex, I wish you would have said, I don't care about size for once. Because they didn't care when Biggie was over there fighting Oh, Jade and Alexis, girl, I wish you would have wretched crossed that doggone bus and snatched some up out of that chair. Do you hear me? You got better restraint than me. So now Natalie stands up and was like, you guys, we're going to do one more baddie baddie shot o'clock and then we're going to go to bed. And I said, wait, they really about to sleep on this bus? Ain't no way y'all telling me Natalie sleeping on this bus. No way. I feel like Natalie have a car following behind her that's going to take her to another hotel or something. Because like the other girl said, they tired of the bus, girl. This is a lot. So the girls get in the bunk and this is where things get crazy. Pretty P will not let this summer thing go. Pretty P over there telling um, Tinker Fat that she a bully because she popped summer and summer didn't hit her back and summer you scary and she just going at summer, at summer, at summer. And I'm over here saying, girl, y'all can't even fight in them damn coffins y'all sleeping in. Why you keep going at the girl? But Pretty P in her Dora the Explorer wig will not let bygones be bygones. Pretty P, even though she running around here saying she won the fights, it seemed like she moving like she lost because Pretty P cannot let it go. She bringing everybody else drama into it and you know some are going to call and answer the response. So I didn't understand what Pretty P's angle was. I think she just wanted to fight. And so they did. In the middle of the bunk, girl, both of these hoes got the swinging. I didn't understand how somebody didn't punch one of them hard cots up there or something. But they got the swinging and wigs got the flying. Exhibit A. Now, Pretty P's wig done came off. And not only that, I noticed the holes in her stocking cap. Or maybe I was tripping. But girl, some uh, not some a uh, Pretty P, uh, you supposed to be above, girl. You look like you below. Oh, my God. What is happening? So now Biggie happened to confession and was like, Yo, bro, these two girls are fighting each other, bro, in the small bus, bro. The, the bus is super small. And all I know is they're tearing each other up. And before I knew it, I looked up in Summer Hat on Pretty P's wig, bro. You got to see it. Y'all check out the clip. It completed so quick by the time I looked up. Summer had Pretty P's wig on. Now, Biggie's saying that Summer had on Pretty P's wig is one thing, but the fact that Summer looked better in Pretty P's wig than Pretty P really, really sent me up a yonder. Do you hear me? Girl, what would possess you to put that girl wig on, Summer? But Summer is troll. Listen, Summer, no, Summer is great reality TV. You, I don't care what nobody say. Argue with your mom. So now Pretty P's up at the front, girl. Natalie trying to put the wig back on her. She must have told Summer, girl, give me the girl wig. Let me put the wig back on her. And Pretty P is not having it. Pretty P is over there talking about she want to fight everybody. She said she don't care who it is. She got hands. She ain't lost no fight. And she want to fight everybody. It kind of reminded me of that little uh, part in Paid in Full. Check it out. Any nigga that ever looked at me wrong owes me money. Oh, ever said any jealous bullshit about me is fucking dead. I mean, pretty piece, sit your box Chevy head ass down, please. It's over, girl. To say you got hands and you ain't lost no fight and you doing all of this, why is you so... Pre like, I don't understand the pressness of this all. Like, I really don't. That's not even a word, but even Natalie trying to calm you down. Matter of fact, get up here in the confessional. Get up here. Now you see you, bitch. You are crash test dummy 101, Murder Urkel. I am so tired of hearing you talking about fighting everybody. You look like a chihuahua or a little multi slash Yorkie or something that's trying to fight a pit bull. Girl, and this is the thing. Summer is smaller than you. You just won't let it go. And you really not looking like you one of those girls, girls. You looking like a crash test dummy. Like, let it go. Like, at, at what point are you going to say, all right, I fought you 59 times. 60 ain't even need to happen. Like, what is going on? Pretty P, you are somewhat good of a TV, I guess-ish, but you are really making it, you're, you're being annoying. You're being super annoying, and it's given to us that you really is more jealous of Summer than you think Summer is of you. 
Like, let it go, Myrtle. Let it go. Go have a, a, a Snickers or something. Get off of here. Now, as soon as they get back to the house, Natalie tell them heifers they about to go to the club. And I said, did anybody take a bath? They went from fight to bust to club. She said, we got to go now. And everybody went to talking about, you wearing that? Yeah, girl, I'm going to just spray some Febreze or I'm going to just do some baby wipes. You hoes is nasty. Girl, what is this? Now, they get on the bus. And turns out the bus is stuck in the mud. One of the wheels is stuck in the mud. And here goes Summer doing her thing as she always do. Talking about, I know why the bus stuck in the mud. It's because of you. Now, I thought she pointed at Big Lex. But for some odd reason, here comes Jazz from the back talking about, you just want to get up in my coochie. Trying to move the goalpost to make it seem as if, I don't know, maybe it was edited. So maybe it was edited to look as if Summer didn't say nothing to uh, Jazz. But here comes Jazz in the back. Trying to act like, oh, she's better. She makes more money. She's prettier. She, she's uh, talking about summer is broke. And it's the same old reads are getting played out. Now, Rolly tried to change the subject and talk about donuts. Because, you know, she big, fat, funky, and nasty, and cheesy. And uh, somehow, Summer and Jazz still going back and forth. Ain't nothing y'all going to do. They going to keep going back and forth. And Summer says she going to keep fighting to the death. So it is what it is. So not only do these heifers get down to the club after coming from fight to bus, then to this club, they get in there, it's turned up, they say it's a bowling alley, but it turns into a club after hours, they have a good time, the baddies are baddying, all the girls in there singing that whack ass song from Natalie talking about, be we outside tonight, and I'm over here saying they should have never gave these bitches access to the studio. Now it's Jade and Alexis' birthday. She comes in fashionably late with a volcano belly button. And she comes in saying she not letting no haters get to her. She's here to have fun. It's her birthday. She turned up. She got a dagger with her. And it is what it is. Girl, but you still got beat up on your birthday, Casper. Oh my God. Get in there, girl. So the girls are in there cutting up. The girls are performing. I'm pretty sure they paid Zeus Network a pretty little penny to have all these baddies in there to get the club up. And I'm pretty sure the baddies are splitting the uh, profits and they all get $50 a piece, girl. <laughs> you can't make this up. So they leave that club, go to another club. So they done went from fight to bus to club. To another club because Natalie feels like it's up. We outside. We ain't doing no tripping. She said, I done took my bath. I don't care what these hoes do. And I'm over here saying, oh, girl, I hope don't nobody find them a man tonight. Do you hear me? Girl, the crevices of these heifers going to be smelling so bad. Do you understand what I'm saying? But nevertheless, that was the end of the episode. They ended up at the second club. We got fights happening next week. And I want to know what y'all think about this episode. Drop down in the comments, man. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Follow me on all platforms. And I can't wait to see what y'all got to say about this. i see y'all who's later, girl. Bye. Mr. Carroll. How you give the voodoo doll time to talk? I don't get no fucking time to talk. Who the voodoo doll is? The nigga you just had up here.